Hey guys, Eric Landon here again and um, well I'm gonna make another top 10 this time the previous top 10 was top 10 J action JRPGs but for console systems and now I'm gonna make one for portable systems so uh, sometimes I wonder what would I be doing without RPGs in my life Anyway, let's get this over with. Well, top 10 best action JRPGs for portable consoles. There are only games that were made exclusively for portable consoles, so no remakes or ports. Thank you for your awesome understanding, and please remember and never forget that this is my personal opinion. Number 10, Blue Dragon Awakened Shadow. Um, where to start about this game? First of all, Blue Dragon is a game that was originally for the Xbox 360. Then it had it had its, its first sequel that was for the um, Nintendo DS. It, it was called Blue Dragon Plus. It's sort of like a real-time strategy game. It's 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 bad, okay? It's bad. But the third the installment in the series that is Blue Dragon Awakened Shadow, this one you're seeing right now, is actually pretty decent. You know, I really, I really like this game, and there's a review on my channel in case you're interested, but it's in Spanish. Sorry, maybe someday I will translate it. Uh, you can download this game um, or buy it from eBay, I don't know. I think it's a little expensive and because it's rare. So it's sort of like a hidden gem, because it's a pretty decent game, it's good. I totally recommend playing it. Number 9 goes to Kingdom Hearts, 358 and a half days. What kind of name is that? I have no idea. Man, I can't believe I'm putting a Kingdom Hearts game on my list. Okay, I'm not a Kingdom Hearts um, hater. I'm not, seriously. I like Kingdom Hearts 2 for the PlayStation 2. Uh, but that was that's just it. You know, I played the first one and I didn't like it. I played Chain of Memories, didn't like it. But this one was um, pretty decent, I believe. When I started playing this, I was a little fla flabbergasted, let's just say that. Like, okay, this is a pretty decent Kingdom Hearts game. So, whether you're a fan or not of this series, I recommend this game. It's just good enough. Number 8 goes to Mimana ER Chronicle. Another hidden gem. People overlook this game, and the ones that know it, um, Maybe they didn't give it a chance because it had generally m mixed reviews or bad reviews. And I disagree. It's a pretty good game. It's really hi hilarious. It's really funny. It's totally worth your time. I mean, it has a lot of defects like, for example, there's no music in the dungeons. And the gameplay can be a little repetitive at times. And the battle system is like any other action RPGs, uh, like a hack and slash game. And um, people complained about small things like, well, you see for yourself right now, you fight against ocean cubes. And these are not the only enemies that are like this, you know. There's this, it's just ridiculous. But that's the point of the game, okay? They didn't make the game like say, thinking, Oh, this is gonna be a serious RPG. It's not a serious RPG, so if you take it seriously, of course it's gonna be bad. And um, don't worry, there's not only two party members. There's four party members, like you can see in this image. Uh, pretty good game, give it a chance. Next on my list is Tales of the World Radiant Mythology. There's actually a trilogy of this game, the three of them for the PSP. But number two and number three never came out of Japan. Ha ha ha. Typical. Well, Tales of the World Raiden Mythology is another pretty decent game. It's not the best, it's just 
let's just say it's fan service because it's, if you play it, it gets very repetitive. It's sort of like, um, it feels like a dungeon crawler at times. Now, not at times, like most of the time. But the point of this game is that you get to fight alongside your favorite characters from the Tales of series. That's just it. It's just fan service, and I think, in my opinion, it's fan service well done. Give this game a chance. It's totally worth your time. Next, number six, is White Knight Chronicles Origins. Okay, this game only came out of Japan in Europe. There's no American version of this. But come on, the PSP is multi-region. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's region free, so you can play it on your PSP or you could just download it and play it. Uh, it's a pretty decent game. I think it was better than the PlayStation 3 version. I'm not kidding. It, the story is supposed to be uh, like a prequel to the two games that came out on the PlayStation 3. And um, I really like this game. It, again, it's a little repetitive like the other previous titles on this list. But that's not a problem, at least, at least it wasn't a problem for me. So you can play this game and enjoy yourself. And as you can see, it has sort of like a Power Rangers setup when you transform into these mystical armor beings that kick ass. Anyway, it's a great game. Number 5, okay, Fantasy Star Portable 2. Man, what an awesome game. I'm a Fantasy Star fan. I'm not a hardcore fan, but I'm a fan nonetheless. This game is the fourth in the entire Fantasy Star Universe series. There's Fantasy Star Universe for the PlayStation 2, then the sequel, which is called Fantasy Star and Vision of the Illuminus, also for the PlayStation 2, then there's a Fantasy Star Portable, the normal one, which is the third. It should be named Fantasy Star Universe 3, and this could be considered Fantasy Star Universe 4 because it's the same story, it follows the same timeline, the same story, etc. This is a really cool hack and slash game. An, an action RPG that will make you feel satisfied. So I really recommend this game. It's a little hard, it's a little tough, but don't let that disappoint you. Don't let it turn you down. It's still great nonetheless. Totally recommend this game. Warning, the following two titles are actually ports from the Super Famicom. I know I said at the beginning that there will be no ports or remakes, but these two are an exception since the original version theme never came out of Japan. And they're awesome. They are... Really. Number 4 goes to Star Ocean First Departure. So, like I said before, uh, this game was originally for the Super Famicom, but this is the only English version we got Both for Europe and America So uh, I was really glad to know that because when I first played Star Ocean 2 I was wondering whatever happened to the first title, you know, why can I play it? Why can't I play this game? And then this version came out. So I was so glad To tell you the truth uh, I know some of you will disagree with me, but this is my least favorite Star Ocean, but it's still a great game. I really enjoy it because, like in the second story, in the Star Ocean 2 for the PlayStation 1, you can choose between two characters and two, two protagonists, and they, they both have their own routes. So if you're a fan of Star Ocean, or even if you're not, give this game a chance. It's a really awesome action JRPG. Totally worth your time. Number three is another port. This is Game Boy Advance's version of Tales of Fantasia. Again, this is the only English version we got. There, there was first this game for the Super Famicom, never released outside Japan. Then they made a port for the PlayStation 1, again never released outside Japan. Come on, that's horseshit! But we finally, after so many years, we got this version. And did you know that this game is the first, the very first Tales of game ever? And guess what? This game was not made by the current game, but company that is uh, Bandai Namco. 
This game was made by the famous company Triace. They weren't called that back then, I believe. But yep, the same guys that developed Star Ocean, the same guys that developed Valkyrie Profile. This is the game. Number two, goes to Fantasy Star Portable. Okay, I know a lot of people are going to say, what? Why is number? Why, why is this on number two when the Fantasy Star Portable 2 is a better version? Well, it may be a better version to you, but to me, I like this game a little better. There's a huge difference between this one and the other one. And that is the co-star on the second one. Uh, Amelia, I believe is her name. I can't stand Amelia. She totally ruined the, the second game for me. But I still liked it, I still enjoyed it, and I think Fantasy Star Portable 1, to me, is a better game. Um, what, what else to say about this game? Give it a chance, like I've been saying for the past 10 minutes or so. Hell, give every single game on this list a chance. They're awesome experiences, awesome JRPGs. So let's finish this list with the number one that is IS7. Yep, guys, this is not pronounced YS or JS or whatever. It is pronounced IS. And I know all of you must be thinking there should have been more IS games on this list. Yeah, I agree with you. Is, the East Saga is just that amazing, it's just one of the most wonderful JRPG franchises out there. Very underestimated, very underrated, and I'm really glad to have come across this beautiful masterpiece because it's by far my favorite JR, JRPG, action JRPG for the entire list. And um, I'm sad to say that maybe if you go and search for action JRPGs for portable consoles, you will find like 20 titles or more. That's it. Yeah, those consoles are, have never been really good for, you know, action JRPGs. But whatever. Is 7 to me is the best in the entire series. The combat is just so fluid, so so fast, and you have party members. Usually in the E series you never have party members, but in this one you do, and that's what makes it awesome. Okay, so we've reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There won't be honorable mentions at the end of this video, like I usually do, uh, because I just don't think there are many action JRPGs for portable consoles. Uh, there are Sword of Mana for the Game Boy Advance, Children of Mana for the DS, but I heard that that one has bad reviews. Uh, maybe Final Fantasy Crisis Core. There's just so very few action JRPGs for portable consoles. But, you know, let's just celebrate that there are at least a few out there and they are just equally great games. So, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends. See you next time.